Us at two minutes at one X speed. Uh, we'll look at the Nidos point of view at this time. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll probably be off ranting again anyway. So uh, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. All right, guys. Unpause again. And do 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 do. Okay. So in this one, we're gonna see a warden first. Again, this is something that some metal players are known for doing. I don't know if this guy is known. Like I said, I've never heard of him. Um, but it's a, a very unique choice. Now. What's interesting is this is basically the same positioning, although a uh, situation, or it was kind of flipped another side or whatever. This is basically the same positioning that was in the last thing, which is what I was going for in trying to find the replays. Um, in this positioning, the Night Elf's home base is two gold mines away from the human's natural expansion. So that's going to allow him to get it uh, that much faster. So the Night Elf player has scouted the human, knows where the expansion is, can obviously kind of expect that. Um, there's going to be a fast expansion going up, and knowing how far away he is from that, he's deciding, okay, well, it's no no use in me going in there and harassing and trying to take it down. Obviously, right now, we've got a scout tower going up, so I want to highlight that. If the warden went over there right now to try to take out that scout tower, could a single warden take that out? Probably not. Not with four uh, peons around, or peasants around, repairing it. Um, if the repair rate was changed, could the single warden take it down? You know what? Probably not. With a warden um, being there, and the two, uh, two footmen, a uh, level two archmage is going to have his uh, water melt or brilliant aura. You know, it's, that, that's going to be a lot harder for him to take down, even if the repair rate's taken down. So, again, as soon as it gets upgraded to guard tower, it's really going to be kind of a, a mute point at that point. Um, you know what, I really should try to find a replay of like a Todd or a Moon doing this and seeing if, if it's at that point. You know, I'm, I'm trying to look more at the, the the pro level, like, you know, this maybe, a, I don't know what you call it, the, the tournament level or the league level, as opposed to maybe a, a high-end, you know, uh, match that's being played. Anyway, so the, his strategy, obviously, you can look at the Nile Space, he's going to be going mass hunts. And the, what's important in this strategy and what's going to work for him, obviously, you guys can look at the uh, game time, is that mass hunts is going to work because of his timing that he's doing here. Instead of wasting time uh, focusing on trying to kill that expansion now, uh, the Warden is out there trying to creep and get some uh, some levels on him, and, he, and he's going to be massing up a few Huntresses to uh, then, when he gets a sizable army of Huntresses, it doesn't matter if that uh, human has guard towers and arcane towers up. If he's got two or three of them, a good group of Huntresses and a level 3 Warden uh, are easily, easily going to be able to take it down. And you're going to get a lot more experience on that single Warden from all the uh, Peasants kills you're getting and uh, you know whatever else you kill along the way. So the whole point in this is obviously to get a high level single Warden. That's always kind of the idea you want to go with a Warden is to get high levels. Uh, so it's 4 minutes and 30 seconds of the game. I believe the Warden starts to creep this middle camp and this will give him uh, level 3, almost level 4 maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. We'll see afterwards. Um, but that's the whole idea behind it. I'm just kind of, I want, the whole point of showing this replay in conjunction with the other one is to show a way to deal with that human a expansion. And to show that Night Elf players have evolved, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard for them to take off the human natural expansion like that, but was a, was a, a nerf to the scout towers repair rate really necessary? No. I mean, we've had, players have evolved to figure it out and uh, deal with it and make their own changes, so, and they have. Um... The other nerf that was made, and I don't, I, f I forget if we'll see the Night Elf hit tier three this game. Um, we do in the next game. Um, is the nerf to the Orb of Venom? The poison duration has re been reduced from ten seconds to eight seconds. Now the damage, I don't believe, has been changed at all. Just the length of time a unit's going to be slowed. So m maybe the damage gets applied uh, just that much faster. I, I don't know. The, the, I haven't. I've really kind of studied that. I didn't really look at that uh, change so much. Um, and the other big nerf to Nihilf, um is this the exploit, supposedly, or this was the exploit in the game, not supposedly, it really was, of passing the staff um, around. Just because it's been in the game for so long doesn't mean it wasn't an exploit. You know, Blizzard, um, assume, I mean, once they knew about it, they knew it was an exploit, and they just, you know, haven't really... Uh, found out a way to get it fixed until really this patch. They knew about it back in the last patch. I mean, pro players have been doing it all the time. They saw it in replays. You know, they just didn't feel it was being abused enough or whatever, didn't feel like it was having that big of an impact on the game. Obviously, with this patch, they do, and they want to change it, and I'm all in agreement with that. I think if, if Blizzard doesn't think that uh, messing with the mechanics of a unit with a shared cooldown by passing them, you know, that's their own choice. Was it fine before? Yeah. I mean, it took micro to do that. You know, it wasn't, it was, it, not, it was maybe easy to do, but for some players, um, but, you know, wasn't that big of a change. So level three ward coming in there is going to have level two phantom knives. I think he went shadow strike too. With all these huntresses, you know, we got an arcane tower and a guard tower going up and we got three more or two more scout towers. 
one's being upgraded to a guard. This amount of hunts is going to be able to take it down easily. And at nighttime, this is even this is really good too. Look at the timing on this. It's almost um, daytime, but it's still nighttime considered. So the knight's going to be able to micro his hunts that much easily. When something gets focused, he just has to stop movement on it, and it'll hide and be cloaked. Because uh, all the female night elf units uh, get shadow milled, obviously. I'm probably saying that more for the newer players than people who are actually listening this far into my audio commentary. Um, anyway, <coughs> whew, losing my voice a little bit here. You can see how effective Phantom Eyes is at the higher, at the even level uh, one. Was able to take down a lot of those footmen, and that was probably just a, that was one a big mistake by Nicolar keeping those in there. Um, obviously, with so, such low and looking at the warden's mana, just as soon as he got into position, it was easy to take it out. Uh, in clearing that fountain at this point too, he was able to get those uh, healing wards, which makes this push even that much easier and that much uh, more effective for the Nile player. So this pretty much ends the game here. Uh, the human player invested a lot of resources into this expansion, uh, and that put him back uh, considerably. Um, now I believe he did tech. He is, or yeah, he's almost finished with tier two, but he doesn't have a big enough army really to take on all those hunts at this present time. It's 35 to uh, 50. Uh, that's easily enough army to be able to push him at this point, and he can be fairly cocky and uh, just kind of push him to his base. Uh, with, with this tech, it's not going to be able to be supported by his, um, you know, expansion now that it's down. So that kind of uh, that hurts him at a good, good bit too. Um, bit of shell casting, a little bit of off the point. I'm trying to keep this as focused as I can on the patch, but um, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted just by watching this. How many hunts is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 hunts, that makes that makes sense, gives him an even 50, uh, 50 food army, so he's still in no upkeep. Really cool way to do it. I don't know if, you, if you've Night Elf players are having trouble with human on this map, this is a cool strategy to maybe adopt. Um, it doesn't seem like it's that difficult to master. You can watch this replay a few times and kind of figure out the timing. Um, it, even if it was cross map, I think that, that you could work on the timing enough to where you could get there and be able to make the push happen. Um, just you'd have to do it a little bit earlier if it was cross map, uh, so you'd have more time to get over there, obviously. You know, that, that's always the hardest part. If you're facing human and you get cross map on that, and that's why there's only really one bad positioning position that human can get on this, and that's when there's only one gold mine in between them and their national expansion. And you know, I've seen human players in some cases where they just, when they scout that out early, they won't fast expand because they know it's uh, a lot easier for, let's say, if they're playing orc for a uh, blade master and grunts to get in there, or farseer and wolves and grunts to uh, take out that expansion and actually cancel it. Um, when they're in this position um, or something similar anywhere on the map or cross map, they have a lot more ability to be able to have the time to be able to make uh, that expansion happen. And, you know, it's just the experience of players knowing that, you know, okay, if I'm in this positioning, there's a good chance that even if I push this tower, this uh, fast expansion early, the human player is still going to be able to get it up. So I'm just not going to worry. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to counter it a different way. There's lots of different ways that, you know, players have learned to counter it. You know, that's why I think Blizzard, you know, Blizzard knows this. You know, they know that, um, that even though there might be some perceived imbalances in the game, that players have adapted. And that's what's so amazing about this game is we've kind of taken um, what we've had for so long and we've kind of moved forward with it. And we've said, hey, this is, this is what we got to deal with. You know, I'm going to make it work for me, you know. And they, they do, you know. They figure out ways to, of making it work, you know. Dots were never changed. You gotta realize this. Dots, dots, Druids of the Talon were never changed. That used to be the complete bane of Orc back in the day. And I know because I did like three or four audio commentaries on it, and, and it was one of the main reasons why I stopped playing uh, as often as I do, is because I was so frustrated with uh, Druids of the Town. I was like, they need a nerf, Night Elf needs a nerf, I can't deal with this. I don't, it seems like everyone else is having a problem with it too. Blah, 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 something needs to change. And you know what changed? Grubby found out a way to counter it. And now Druids of the Talon, pfft. No one does that, you know. Other, I don't know if it was Grubby. It was probably Grubby, but you know, it was a bunch of other pro orc players basically found out ways to counter it. it, was, it